laptop flight restrictions spread as security services continue to grapple with ISIS inspiration operations. The Nikur's botnet returns, but now it's swapped pump-and-dump scans with penny stocks for its usual ransomware payloads. Magic POS is active in the North American wild, and the Bangladesh bank hack looks like it may have been a North Korean job. Time for a message from our sponsor, Dragos Incorporated. If you operate industrial control systems, you owe it to yourself and your stakeholders to get to know Dragos. They've got a new white paper, Insights for Building an ICS Security Operations Center. And it's fair to say you won't find their perspective elsewhere. You can find it on their website, dragos.com. And while you're there, check out the three-pronged defense they offer infrastructure operators cybersecurity technology, expert services for recovery or threat hunting, and timely threat intelligence focused on the bad actors who threaten industrial control systems. Whether you operate in the electrical power, water, or oil and gas utility sectors, Dragos has something valuable for you and your security. Again, that's dragos.com, D-R-A-G-O-S.com, for your industrial control system cybersecurity peace of mind. And we thank Dragos for sponsoring our show. Major funding for the CyberWire podcast is provided by Silence. I'm Dave Bittner in Baltimore with your CyberWire summary for Wednesday, March 22, 2017. Yesterday's news of U.S. restrictions on carry-on electronics in flights originating from a specified number of Middle Eastern airports is echoed today with similar news from the U.K. The prohibitions bar large devices like laptops, generally things larger than mobile phones, from being brought into the passenger cabin. They must go as checked baggage. The UK's ban affects airports in Tunisia, Turkey, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. The UK referenced only evolving terrorist threats. The US cited intelligence indicating jihadist plans to conceal explosives and electronic devices. Again, both countries' restrictions affect only flights originating in a relatively small number of Middle Eastern airports. French police make arrests in connection with the weekend attack at Orly Airport. Police, researchers, policymakers grappling with the threat from ISIS continue to look for ways of countering the effects of online inspiration on lone wolves. An op-ed in The Hill argues that the civilized world is losing the cyber war to ISIS. The editorialists mean ISIS information operations continue to succeed. And that to win, the civilized world needs to emulate some of ISIS's more successful tactics. And before they do that, the civilized world's information operators need to buck up on their language skills and learn something about the appeal ISIS makes in the name of Islam. Turning to the conventional criminal threat, researchers have observed that spam surged this week after a global drop-off dating to mid-December of 2016. The December to March hiatus occurred when the Nikur's botnet ceased activity, apparently at its master's command. Its sudden return seems due to a pump-and-dump penny stock campaign. Naked Security says the attempted manipulation involves Incapta Inc., a pink sheet-listed media company, but the scam seems to be a third-party caper. The typical features of pump-and-dump spam are all there. The scammers tout penny stock trading over-the-counter, and in an email sent to thousands, they warn you that this tip is a big secret. Don't tell anyone. Fraud experts say, don't bite. Nikurs had formerly been used mainly to distribute ransomware. This reappearance of the criminal botnet with a new purpose doesn't mean that ransomware is yesterday's news. The SANS Internet Storm Center continues to track the new Cerebear infestations daily, and researchers note that both Cerebear and the fading Locky ransomware variants are growing harder to detect. Norwich University is a private military college located in Vermont, and it's the oldest private military college in the United States, having been established in 1819. They're home to the Norwich University Applied Research Institute, funded in part by DHS and DOD. One of their specialties is cyber wargaming and simulation, using a platform they've developed called DecideFS. Philip Sussman is president of the Norwich University Applied Research Institute. So the Decide platform, it's distributed environment for critical infrastructure decision-making exercises. So the the first D in Decide is distributed. 
And when we run an exercise, we have participants in that particular exercise from four continents that, that played simultaneously in the event. So you as an organization can, can play as you fight. And uh, it allows you to uh, have one large bank, let's say, or, or a brokerage firm or, or exchange, and be able to distribute themselves across multiple organizations because that's exactly how they're organized. If something takes place in the marketplace today and you, you have to respond, your IT folks may be in one state, your public relations folks in a different headquarters or the main office where the leadership is is, is someplace else. And so the capability of the tool set is to allow you as, as an organization to play uh, in different ways. It's a virtual tool set. It's served from the cloud. And it's not focused as much on the bits and bytes. What am I seeing on the wire? Uh, it's focused on what are the impacts for my business. And based upon the impacts of my business and the indicators that you would expect within your particular role, and that's the critical piece of what we're doing here. We're putting in front of the leadership a set of challenges and w that would be reflective of what you would see within a, a cyber event. There's going to be some messaging that takes place. There's going to be some indicators and warnings that take place. We attempt to create decision tension within the uh, individual participants of the exercise and get them to exercise their, their internal communications, their incident response plan, and get to that decision tension that allows both the organization, everyone in the organization to know what they're going to do when they face a cyber event, but also to be introspective of whether or not the way that they're organized, not only from a cyber perspective, but from a business model perspective, is in the best interest of their risk posture. That's Philip Sussman from Norwich University. In the U.S., online tax fraud is in full swing. The IRS and the Department of Education have suspended the Online Federal Student Aid Tool, that's the FSA, because the IRS system on which it depends, the Data Retrieval Tool, may be exploitable to gain information useful in identity theft. The Data Retrieval Tool has itself been suspended as well. Magic POS, a new strain of point-of-sale malware, has been observed circulating in North America. We've heard from several experts who commented on the threat. Brian Lang of LastLine offers some encouragement. While more advanced than some of its precursors, Magic POS is detectable by monitoring network traffic for anomalous behavior. He also cautions, quote, Each time there's a breach like this where public samples are available, companies need to verify that their advanced malware protection is capable of detecting the new threat, end quote. Robert Capps from New Data Security reminds us that stolen credentials are the black market's preferred currency. Magic POS is after valid consumer data that can be used in future crimes. U.S. armed services are looking for ways of punishing bad online behavior. Whatever they come up with will no doubt fall under Article 134 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And the NSA has offered its conclusions about the Bangladesh bank heist of February 2016. As many others have speculated, NSA thinks that signs point to North Korea. Time for a quick thanks to our sponsor, Palo Alto Networks. You can visit them at go.paloaltonetworks.com slash secure clouds. Businesses and their data are heading to the cloud in record numbers, making the cloud an integral part of almost every enterprise-level organization. Palo Alto Networks understands this, along with the fact that your data and applications are distributed across the private cloud, the public cloud, software-as-a-service environments, and any number of configurations in between. Make sure that your data and apps are secure and protected wherever they may be. Palo Alto Networks delivers the broadest, most comprehensive cybersecurity for private cloud, public cloud, and SaaS environments. Secure clouds are happy clouds. So find out how to secure yours. Get started today at go.paloaltonetworks.com slash secure clouds. And we thank Palo Alto Networks for sponsoring our show.
Joining me once again is Joe Kerrigan. He's from the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute. Uh, Joe, welcome back. Uh, not too long ago, uh, Cloudflare had uh, what we in the biz call a very bad day. I wanted to swing back around and discuss that with you. There's some interesting lessons here to be uh, learned from what happened to Cloudflare. They're a web hosting company, yeah, and they're a big one. They handle about 10% of the Internet's web traffic. And recently they had a bug in their code that allowed information to be leaked. Uh, it was found by a researcher at Google. Yeah, they're calling it cloud bleed because it, it is reminiscent of the heart bleed vulnerability from a couple of years ago. The problem is a Boolean operator in the code, somebody used a greater than or equals to as opposed to an equals to. And that allowed more information to come out. I'm not sure of all the technical details, but it certainly seems like uh, something very similar to the Heartbleed, where you could ask for more characters than you said you wanted, and it would just dump memory back to you in the response. Yeah, it says it's a memory leak. Right, it, yeah. exactly. Uh, and, you know, these Boolean operators in, in code, you, you can be reviewing the code and look at it and say, this should work just fine, uh, because you're not considering the edge case where somebody... Is, is asking for more information than they should be asking for, and the, the program will give it to them. Uh, in fact, these Boolean operator uh, errors, there was a, uh, a, back in, I think, 2005, there was a backdoor found in the Linux kernel hmm. that was from a very similar operator, but the, the problem is that in C, the Boolean operator for equals is two equal signs, but the assignment operator is, equal, is just one equal sign. Uh, so if you're just reading it casually, you might not notice that that's an assignment operator, not a Boolean operator. And I'm, I'm quite sure the same thing happened here. If you're, looking at, uh, if you're looking at greater than or equals to versus equals to, which is, again, two equal signs, you could just gloss over that and not even see that it's an error. And, and so the, it'll make it through testing, and, it'll and, make it and through certainly testing. this, this it'll, system has been deployed for a while yep. before anyone noticed there was a problem. Yep, exactly. It'll make it through testing and code reviews just fine. So they're saying that one out of every 3.3 million requests through Cloudflare potentially resulted in a memory leakage. Correct. That sounds like an uncommon thing, but when you're talking about a provider as large as, uh, as Cloudflare, right. it adds up. But that's 3.3 million Requests, HTTP requests, requests, and how many yeah. HTTP requests are on the internet every day, and and what's ten percent of that number? That's I bet that's a big number. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it is. It, it does add up. So it's interesting. I mean, you know, the other thing you and I talk about a lot are passwords, right? And they're saying change your passwords. Yeah, the, um, uh, it, this is the host of the host for companies like Uber and OkCupid and some other big names. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not sure that I would. Be I, I wouldn't be in a panic telling people to go out and change their passwords, but you certainly cannot hurt yourself right now by changing your password. You can never hurt yourself by changing a password. If you follow my frequent advice of using a password manager, it's it's very easy to do. Right, right. Get yourself on a whatever schedule. Right. Uh, to change those passwords, and then when you have an event like this, just go out and make sure you can change your passwords again. All right, Joe Kerrigan, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Dave. And that's the CyberWire. Thanks to all of our sponsors who make the CyberWire possible, especially to our sustaining sponsor, Silence. To find out how Silence uses artificial intelligence to protect you from cyber attacks, visit Silence.com. The CyberWire podcast is produced by Pratt Street Media. Our editor is John Petrick. Our social media editor is Jennifer Iben. Technical editor is Chris Russell. Executive editor is Peter Kilpie. And I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening.